Hi and thanks for joining me again. Okay, so this is the troubleshooting section. Now you're going to be using Flow over the next couple of years. So what we're going to try and do here is cover some issues that you may come across. So let's get inside and check those out. So one of the most commonly forgotten things is actually to turn off the mains water outside. Um, and you will know this whenever you switch on flow. Uh, the motor will just continue to run, but also whenever you open up one of your taps or faucets, the water will continue to run uh, more than it should do. So make sure you get that water turned off. Now there is a safety feature in flow where the air line connects into the water line. Uh, there is a check valve, which means that the air can travel through into the system, but the water cannot get back up through that air line. But make sure you get your uh, water turned off. Another thing is to make sure that all of your taps, faucets, uh, showers have all been turned off as well because essentially what you're doing is you're putting air into a balloon. If there's a hole in the balloon, flow won't be able to build up to that 15 psi of pressure uh, and therefore the, the compressor will just continue uh, to keep running. Um, so make sure you've got all of your taps and faucets uh, switched off. So far be it from us to lay blame at anyone else's door and um, we obviously want to check our own kit first of all. If you find that you're not getting power through to flow um, it may could be a case that uh, there isn't electricity getting through to the socket in which case one of the little mini trips may have blown. A way to test that very quickly would just be to plug something else into it and see if that is actually working. If it is working um, it c and you're not getting electricity through to flow when you switch it on what you can actually do is check the fuse in here in the plug you would just change it like you would change any other fuse okay another way of checking if you are getting power up through the cable here is to use one of these little electricity detectors um, they're they're not very expensive and sure maybe you could borrow one from someone um, but by holding it to the cable it will actually beep and it will tell you that there is power getting through if there is power getting through to it um, and yet it is the switch that is something that you're going to need to return flow back to us um, and, and we will repair this and there is a five year warranty on flow. Um, so what you would need to do is just on this little uh, connection for the air pull the lug back on the um, uh, uh, push fit connection and just pull out the airline. Then what you would do is just uh, pop off these little black caps and just get a very fine screwdriver behind them and just pop them off and unscrew them. If you have been using the butterfly screws for a hollow wall um, we will replace those and, and send those back to you uh, whenever we repair it. Okay so that brings us to the compressor itself. If you find that um, air is actually getting through from the compressor and yet it's just traveling on and on and on what you might actually find and it doesn't stop at the the 15 psi um, what you can actually do is make sure that all of your taps and faucets outlets showers and so on um, and I'll be covering those in a second are actually all turned off okay because basically this is going to put air into a balloon if you will and of course that balloon uh, needs to be sealed so that you can build up the pressure now by switching it on to know that flow is actually operating properly and that it will slow down and stop at the 15 psi. As you can see here I've got the airline off. If I turn flow on you will hear a difference when I put my finger over this um, outlet. Okay, The motor, it, it's nearly impossible for me to actually get the motor to stop and the compressor to stop altogether but uh, you know you will hear it start to slow down and that means that it's operating and doing its correct thing so if I just turned on it's quite loud um, so I'll just put my finger over okay so you can hear there um, quite clearly that once I put my finger over it's building up to that 15 psi. Now it is escaping obviously um, around the seal there um, but you can hear that it is obviously wanting to slow down and stop because it's reaching that pressure. Okay so uh, once you put it back together use your butterfly screws pop this uh, back in here uh, and that's it. Any other problems if flow does stop altogether um, that there's no power um, uh, please just uh, get in touch with us. Do not open the box and work at it yourself because you are dealing with electricity supply. So very, very important. Um, on the website, you can contact us, um, obviously, to, to find out how to return that back to us. 
Okay, so as I've mentioned throughout the drain down process, one of the things you can't do is flush the toilets until the very end. And this is one of the most common questions that comes through on our technical support um, because the compressor will just continue uh, to trundle on um, and it won't reach that PSI level and then stop. The same happens with our portable system also um, where the compressor needle or digital gauge just doesn't have any reading. And uh, commonly we find out that, that someone has actually uh, flushed the toilet before finishing the drain down process. You can't do that because what happens is once the uh, toilet is flushed the ball cock will fall down and as you can probably hear if I'm quiet you will hear the water starting to come in. So when that ball cock falls it opens this valve. Now again as I've mentioned before hole in a balloon um, you're not able to build up the pressure. When your water is turned off, your mains water is turned off uh, and you flush the toilet, this ball cock will lie in the downward position and leave this valve open. So just make sure uh, that you don't flush the toilet. If you do and you were halfway through and you accidentally flush the toilet, the easiest way to remedy that is just to get a bucket of water uh, and to fill the cistern back up again. What that will do is it will bring the ball cock back up to the top again and obviously seal this valve off. Another way is what you could do is get a little bit of pipe or a bit of stick and what you could do then is just place it down into the water, cut it to the right length and just wedge the ball cock back up again uh, and that will hold it in place and it will close that valve off. So again, just on toilets, uh, you'll find sometimes that the mechanisms can get a little bit flaky. And what you will do is you will get a little air leak coming from them. Now, air will compress. And so you may not necessarily be getting a drip from this particular valve, but you will hear air escaping from it. And that's because when the air compresses, it will escape 10 times quicker than an actual water leak will. Now, eventually that will become more flaky until, until such times that you will get a drip continuously happening in the cistern. Um, you can, there are some fine adjustments and you're best just taking a photograph of it and taking it up to your local plumbing suppliers um, and they'll show you how to adjust it. Um, one of the things they may suggest to you is that you actually replace the arm itself <coughs> inside uh, the toilet and that would be this part here. Now, what you find is, is that this part um, stands upright and on the end of the arm here would be the ball of the actual ball cock. Now what happens is, is as that uh, arm lifts it closes this little plunger and that's what obviously keeps the the, um, the water from continuing so when it rises in the water. Now as I say they get a little bit flaky and you can just replace them. Now the thing to do would obviously be flush the toilet, mop up whatever water is in there, undo the nut underneath okay and get a little bit of silicone or plumber's mate and put that back in and you can actually for most of these use the same ball on uh, the end here and it just replaces it and you'll find uh, you're back in business again. Okay so just as important as the toilet uh, the seals on your taps or faucets and your shower and everything every other outlet is just as important. Now if you find that flow is just trundling on with its air pressure it might mean that you have got a, a, an air leak uh, coming from one of these outlets. Now the thing to do is close all of the doors if the flow is still going um, or get it, someone to switch it off momentarily while you put your ear down to, to hear if there is a leak coming from those. So if you have it might just be a washer that needs replacing. Now uh, if we take outside also your outside taps um, that are connected to the likes of power hoses, um, to garden hoses, garden irrigation, that type of thing. Um, just make sure that that tap is firmly closed off and again you know disconnect whatever is, is on there and, and, and listen to it. Washing machines and dishwashers just the same. If you put your ear down to them you will actually hear the whistle of the air leaking and, and coming through there. Uh, so these are just a few of the different things to, to check out. Okay and that's troubleshooting covered and you'll find that we've covered quite a few issues there. Now this list is not exhaustive and as time goes on obviously we'll come across uh, other issues that we will um, put on the website. Now um, if you do find that you have got an issue that hasn't been covered please feel free to contact us on the uh, email shown or indeed go to the support section where you can find uh, our telephone number where you can contact us directly.